I'm going to speak again on uh, speaking to the mountain, number two. And I just want to go over a couple of things to, just to revise us a little bit about last week. But Mark 11, uh, 22, and Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. In other words, have God kind of faith. God kind of faith is faith that says and calls those things that be not as though they were. There's something about faith that I believe that God is going to renew and restore in these last days that we're living where there'll be something inside us. There'll be a, a, an understanding. There'll be a confidence in what we're saying and what we're doing that faith will just ooze out of our lives. Faith is not something that you have to stir up, but faith is a lifestyle. Faith is living. We live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Do you believe that? And so today, as we, as we just read this and as we go through these scriptures, and let's just have a look at it. And, and Jesus answered and said, have this God kind of faith. Then he says, for assuredly. In other words, he's saying, I'm telling you the truth. I want you to understand. This is, this is gospel. This is the truth. I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So Father, today we come in Jesus' name. Father, we want to just break down uh, wrong concepts that we have about your word, about what is available to us, things that have been perhaps sown in doubt in times of, of discouragement that are, that are lingering in, in our thinking. And when we hear a statement like this, Lord, uh, we, we don't really grasp it. We think, oh, well, it's just another one of those things. But Father, I pray today that you'd break through, you'd smash every wrong thinking. And Lord, that we'd be able to get the unadulterated Word of God into us. And Lord, we'd be able to grab hold of faith in Jesus' name and know that we can speak to mountains and we can speak to different circumstances and situations that get around our lives and that we can have victory in Jesus' Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Friend, it's very, very important what you say. It's very, very important how we speak. Speaking is very, very important. The Bible says that life and death are in the tongue. And we can speak either life or death to ourselves. The Word of God, as we have a look here in the book of Romans chapter 8, I'm just going to read from verse 31 here. And it says, what then shall we say to these things? It's obvious here, Paul's trying to uh, set up a situation where, where he has obviously had an encounter with God. You know, I believe that every one of us needs to have an encounter, an experience that will take us out of the natural into the supernatural. That'll take us out of normal thinking into, into supernatural thinking. That will break the way we feel and, and some of the words and things that have been spoken over your life that says you'll never ever make it or you'll never do this or different things like that, that will allow us to smash some things that we can see what God really says and what God says He means. Assuredly, I say to you, I'm not fooling around. I'm being serious, He says. I want you to know that whatever you say, if you speak to that mountain, it will be removed and cast into the sea. If you don't doubt. See, one of the great things is doubt that gets into our minds and into our thinking. And, and so he starts to share here. So what shall we say to these things? See, things confront us. There's circumstances that get around our lives all the time. There's different uh, situations that we all find ourselves in. And when these come into our lives, sometimes we say, I, can, I, can't, get, I can't get through this. I'll never make it. I, or we start to speak negative thoughts. So Paul here is trying to encourage us to, yeah, things will come. Circumstances will come around your life. The things that will come around your life, you do not have an answer for. But you don't allow your feelings to dominate and control you. We must allow the Word of God to have its way in our life. If we don't let the Word of God have our way in our lives, we'll, we'll end up uh, being subject to the things that the enemy says. So it says, that, so what, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? See, that's something there that we've got to understand. Hey, if God be for me, who can be against me? 
But then your mind says, but there's a lot of things against you. There's this one and that one and that one. Yes, because possibly it's the way we've been speaking that we've allowed the enemy to take over and take, uh, you know, have an opportunity to steal from us. How many people know that the devil ro- comes to rob, to kill and destroy? He is a thief. He is a, God tells us he's a thief. He wants to steal the word of God. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your victory. What are we going to say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who who condemns? Is it Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God and also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sakes we are killed all day long and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. You see, we've got to understand we're more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am persuaded. We've got to have this confidence that no weapon formed against me can prosper. Whatever the enemy's thrown at us will not prosper. It will not triumph. We will triumph. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. You you might say, but I'm not triumphing. No, well, praise God. Listen to what we've got to say today and start to change the way you speak and change change the way you act. And there's a great possibility that you will triumph. (laughs) Oh. Oh. Don't put it back on me, you say. No, we have to, amen? It's your fault. You're the pastor. (laughs) No, 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 no. Come on, friends. Come on. We've got, to, we've got to understand that we are more, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I tell you the truth. I am not lying. This is what the man says, not me. I'm glad he says that, amen. I'm telling you the truth. Paul has obviously had some amazing, amazing encounter with God. And friend, I want to tell you, when you have an encounter with God, when God touches you supernaturally, you'll find you'll start to speak differently. We can act out something. You can try to pretend to be somebody. You can even try to have faith and speak like a faith person speaks. I want to tell you, friends, we should sing a chorus, I'm the great pretender. (laughs) Friend, it's not anything to do with pretending. God wants us to be real, amen? He is a real God and He wants you to have a real experience with Him that you can break through because you'll have an encounter with God. Then you'll know because you know because you know because you know. And when God starts to move like that, you'll find that you'll think differently and you'll talk differently and you'll act differently and you'll receive differently. If we're not receiving, it is not God, it is us. And we need to change some things. We need to do some things that are a little bit different. He says we can have whatever we say. We say, it is finished. (laughs) But God also said, it is finished, amen? (laughs) Your trials are finished. We say at times, I am finished. (laughs) God says, no, it is finished. I have triumphed over hell and death. I have given you something so powerful, so, so awesome that if you could just grasp it, if you could just get a hold of it, you'll, you'll, you'll break every stronghold. 
We nullify the power in the word towards us when we say, I can't do it. When we say it's not possible. When we say, I can't get the victory. Friend, we've got to start to change the way we speak. In John 6, 30, uh, 63, that the Bible says this, the word that I speak to you are spirit and life. In Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void or empty or without fruit, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Do you believe that today? What an amazing thing God speaks today. Friend, I believe that we have to stop the enemies raging and the enemies running all over us. And the only way you can do that is when you stand and you start to declare, as in 1 Chronicles there, Ben and I, there was a giant there. there was a, he had a great beam. He was seven foot six tall. And friend, like many times with us, we can look at a situation and say, it is impossible for me to get through this. The situation is too hard, it's too strong. It, I, I, I've come against it before and, I've, and it's beaten me. But I want to tell you, it's a time to get rid of that thinking and it's time to start to stand up and declare what God says about you and what God's put inside you and have tenacity and strength and something like that that will rise up and say, devil, I don't care. You might be coming at me with a beam and with a sword and everything like that, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. I want to tell you greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world and that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And friend, I want to tell you, you are no match right now. Yes, you might be able to overcome me, but you cannot overcome the Word of God that's in me. And I come against you with the Word of God today and I put you to flight and I drive you back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and slap him up the side of the head with the Word of God. And you see this young man, as he saw this giant and he had this great beam and it says there that he went over and he took that beam off him and he wrestled with him and he took that thing and he actually killed him with his own sword, his own beam rather. I want to tell you, we can passively sit back. We can passively play church. We can passively say nice little prayers. We can passively say things like that. But I want to tell you, Stan, if you realize that we are in a war, it's time that we started to act like warriors. Warriors, not warriors. <laughs> it's time we started to, to speak with authority in Jesus' name. Because God has given us authority. He has given us power. He has given us strength. And He's given us a victory. And I believe that today with every fiber in my being. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood in the midst of a confused group of people. I'd like you to have a look with me in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 we'll have a look at here. Verse 12, it says, So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? You see, here is God moving by His Spirit in an amazing supernatural way. I want to tell you, when God starts to move, you'll always have the mockers. You'll always have the people that are, that, that are confused. And there's always the ones that are going to start to say things that are contrary. And here, what I believe is one of the greatest outpourings of God's Spirit that this universe has ever seen. The birthing of the new church. And here it is, there's a group of people in an upper room that have experienced something so dynamic and so powerful. They have tongues of fire on their head. They're, they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. They're obviously, some sort of a manifestation's happening. People thought that they were drunk. There was something happening. And as soon as this happens, the mockers come in. And the mockers try to take away. Because I want to tell you, friends, the devil is a thief. 
And you've got to be careful when you've had an experience with God because and you start to talk about the experience that you had with God and you start to talk about, hey, how I had a $15,000 bill, but God helped me and it reduced down to 500. The mockers will come and try to steal the truth out of that. You might say you had a healing or you had a deliverance or you had this. The mockers will come to try to steal what God's done in your life to make it sound like it's just something trivia and it's something really that didn't happen to you and you do not understand it. But I want to tell you, God wants you to get those, those things that He's done in your life and He wants you to build on that and He wants you to get excited about it. Amen. God set me free. God delivered me in Jesus' name. I don't care what the devil says. It's what God says. Amen. And you see, Peter, as he, as he was there, he was watching as the people were mocking and as people were, were saying this and saying that. They're drunk with wine and they're all this sort of stuff. But friend, there's a lot of things like that that go around us in your workplace and where you're where we're with the group or whatever you're at, where people start saying things and start pulling things down. And what happens many times if we just let them shower it on us and they, we let them pour it out upon us because we are gentle Jesus, meek and mild. I want to tell you, friends, it's time for the church to put off that coat and put on another coat. Coat of war, it's a coat of armor. And Peter was listening to these people as they were mocking and as they were saying different things and as they were saying all this stuff. And he says, hey, shut your mouth. It's not as you suppose. And it's time that we started to say to some people when they start mocking God, when they start mocking the things that God's done for your life, say, shut your mouth. You mightn't say it like that. I wouldn't say it like that. But you've got to say, stop. God, touch my life. What happened to me is real. You can say whatever you like. But my God rules and reigns and my God is a good God and my God has delivered me from that thing and he has set me free and I'm going to praise him. You can mock as much as you like, but I want to tell you my Jesus reigns today. See, he had to stand up and say some stuff. The quiet, the church sits back and says nothing. So they were amazed and perplexed. Others mockingly said, but Peter said, in the last days, saith God. <laughs> and we've got to start to say no. When you, as it says, you know, my God will supply all of my need or my God has healed me or God's delivered me, whatever it might be. We've got to have a word and tell them what God says. Because you see, it's amazing. We sometimes think, who am I? And Peter, most holy in that midst, because you've got to remember that he was probably wasn't at just a couple of hours before, wasn't feeling so flushed, wasn't feeling so excited. Most holy thought he was going to die. But now he's filled with the Holy Spirit and he's got something fresh over his life. He, 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 he could have just caught what they were saying, but no, he, something now rises up within him. He, he, he could have just said nothing, but no, he had to say something. Friend, we've got to say something. It's a time to talk. Whatever you say to this mountain. And you see, what, what God wants to do, you, you might feel insignificant. You might, like he wouldn't have been feeling all that brilliant. He most probably wouldn't feel the most spiritual man on the planet. But you see, what God wants to reveal to you is that your words are powerful. That's right. And when Peter stood up and he started to speak, it was the anointing that came on him. And he said, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he began to preach and he began to speak. And as, as he did, the anointing came down. You see, you'd be surprised what God will do when we start to stand up. God can't do anything when we walk backwards. But when we stand up and start to declare what God says, this is, they're not drunk as you suppose. But this was what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters. And he went on and on. And as he began to preach, the Holy Ghost fell and conviction fell on the people. And 3,000 people said, what must we do to be saved? We want revival. 
Revival's not just going to come because your, your wish list is on it or it's on your bucket list. It's going to happen as we stand up and we begin to speak the Word of God. Amen. Give God something that He can anoint. Put that down in your notes. Just thought of that one. That's not a bad one, is it? Give God something He can use. Give God something that He can use. Spoken by the prophet Joel, in the last days, I'll pour out of my spirit. The anointing. Everybody say the anointing. Have a look in Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 4. Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was tempted by the enemy. But in Luke chapter 4, 18, and Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. The enemy comes to steal his purpose, steal what he's about. Friend, I want to tell you, there are many, 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 uh, literally a multitude of people that God has raised up, anointed, called, that today are playing tiddlywinks in some back room because they allowed the devil to steal. The devil came to Jesus to steal his purpose and his plan. I don't know about you, but I know that the enemy's come against me from time to time to try to steal the purpose and the plan that God had for my life. What about you? What are you going to do? Are you just going to sit there and cop it? Or are you going to do what Jesus did? And Jesus said, Satan, get behind me. You've got to speak into some situations. You've got to speak into some things. Amen? Friend, I don't know about you, but you can cop it or you can chop it. <laughs> you can cop it or you can chop it. <laughs> you can stop it. Friend, I want to tell you, you can stop it with a word. Or you can cop it by walking away and saying, yes, you're right, devil. Or say, shut your mouth. Get behind me. Get out of my face. Get out of my life. And then after that, in, verse eight, in chapter 4, verse 18, and then Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want to tell you, the devil must have had hernia. He, I can see him running to the dispensary right now. Give me some of that Valium. <laughs> give, me, give me a shot of this. Man, this would have put him into orbit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the devil would have said, no! <laughs> what an amazing thing. He was obviously quoting from the prophet Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2. goes on there. But you see, he also says there in Isaiah, it speaks about the day of the vengeance of the Lord. But you see, today this man, this Jesus, as he spoke, he closed the book and he gave it back to his attendants and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Friend, I want to tell you, these scriptures are fulfilled. These scriptures are truth. They are yea and they are amen. I believe that. I believe that. In Isaiah 55 verse 11, I've already quoted, the Lord shall, the word shall not return to me void. God's promise is an outpouring of His Spirit. He said, in the last days, I will pour out of my Spirit. Luke 4, 1. We read that as Jesus was being tempted 
filled with the Spirit, but then was confronted by the enemy trying to steal from him. He had to speak to him. He spoke these words. He said, because God has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. The anointing and the Holy Spirit are, the, are one. You are already anointed of the Holy Spirit. You are already empowered by the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the same Spirit that got hold of Jesus and caused Him to do all the things that He did is now in you. But what happens is, Jesus there, as He said, do this and do that or eat the bread, He said, get behind me, Satan. If Jesus would have taken the bread and if he would have caused that stone to become bread and if he would have eaten that bread, he would have nullified the purpose and the plan that God had for his life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Man, friend, we live by the word of God. We have to live by this word. We live by this word. Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, then afterwards he was confronted with by the devil. He read from the book of Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The Holy Spirit and the anointing are one. I've got to have confidence in that. I've got to have confidence today that we are an anointed people. Can you say, I am anointed? I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I am empowered by God to rule and reign in this life. You are filled and anointed for a purpose, not just to go to church. You are filled and anointed for a purpose. You are and I are filled and anointed with the Holy Spirit to attack. Everybody say attack. Attack. The Bible says you shall receive power. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. So to me, that has a, a, a sort of a, a bit of an indication that God wants us to do something. Is that correct? You are anointed with, with the Holy Spirit and with power to attack. Everybody say attack. See, Church isn't, doesn't want to be an attacker. We, 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 please, I'm, I want, I'm attacking tonight, today, passiveness. Is that okay? We can't, we've got to get more serious. We're here to attack sin, sickness, death, knowing that these things are under our feet. Jesus attacked Hades, hell, whatever you want to call it, itself. Jesus attacked Hades and hell itself on our behalf. Let me say that again. Jesus attacked. (laughs) Jesus attacked hell itself on our behalf. Jesus attacked hell itself on our behalf. He didn't need to attack it for himself. He attacked it for you and me. And in doing so, he destroyed, he smashed the gates of hell. The the gates of death in Jesus' name. I no longer, I will never die. In the natural people might think I have. But this real Neil that's on the inside is going to jump up, amen? Never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet though he were dead, not though he, though he is, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, what? Will never die. I believe that. He attacked Hades and hell itself on your behalf. Satan's kingdom was set up uh, 
pouring his fury and wrath on God's people, on, on God's creation leading people astray, leading people into death. Today, we see the manifestations of it as, as we see the jails are filled with murderers and corruption and goodness knows what else. As we see our young people at schoolies there, just their, their, their morality, their life is so cheap and so thin. Young boys and young girls standing out in the balconies totally naked. Uh, no, unashamed at Lee, friend, no, no morals, values whatsoever, selling their bodies for nothing, loosely just living and, and people there that, that want to just steal your money, people there that are stealing from, from widows and broken people. We saw on the news the other day, people that are going in there and stealing from the, from the cancer people out of their bins and goodness knows what. Morality is, this is what the devil is doing, is pouring his fury and his wrath on God's creation because God says that his desire is that none would perish. And we're looking at thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people going into a Christless eternity. And the church passively sits by and sings lullabies. But I want to tell you our worship and our praise has got to go up notches, amen. It's got to reach a level, as Kindler was saying there, where, where we sing with the angels of God, where we just don't say, well, I don't like you this morning. Well, it's too bad, friend. I want to tell you, you're going to lift up those hands that hang down. You're going to shout hallelujah. And, and it doesn't matter because if we don't break through, I want to tell you, the devil will run all over you. Friend, who can hear what I'm saying today? I don't like that song. Too bad. <laughs> Throw your hands in the air anyhow. Yes. Sing as loud as you can. I had a kookaburra this morning. He was yelling his head off. I think, my God, can I bring him to church? <laughs> Hey. Anybody else getting anything out of this? Jesus attacked AIDS and health on our behalf. Satan's kingdom was all set up, but he went in. How many people want to go in? Into something different? Come on. How many people want to go into something different? Do something different. Start declaring something different. Get whatever you can out of it, amen. Get whatever you can out of it. He went right on in on a word because God said on the third day, I'm gonna raise you up, son. And we gotta, we gotta believe that God's gonna make us ahead and not the tail. We gotta believe that God's gonna push through for us in Jesus' name. We gotta believe that as we speak, He will fill our mouths. We gotta believe as we speak, He will anoint us. He will help us because He's our great helper. He went right in on a word on the third day, I'll raise Him up. It all seemed, uh, it was lost as they took His limp body from the cross as they laid it in the tomb rolled a large stone over the entrance, placed guards beside the stone. But faith says, I will raise him up on the third day. Faith says, my word shall not return to me empty. Faith said, I will do it for you. If you give me something to work with, I will do it for you. If you don't give me something to work with, I can't help you. But on the third day, he began to stir. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it dwells in you. He, you, he will anoint you. He will raise you up. He will stir you up. He will empower you. He will put victory in your veins. He will do something dynamic in your life. If that same spirit, he will raise the church from the ashes that it may be around right now. But he's gonna raise up a glorious church. He's gonna have an amazing church. He's gonna have a powerful church. He's going to have a church without spot or wrinkle. He's going to have a church that know how to use the name which is above every name. A demons will flee. The name of Jesus, demons will flee. 
The same Spirit will be poured out and the church will rise. Amen. Jesus attacked hell itself on your behalf. He stripped Satan of his authority and led captivity captive. He, Jesus, has triumphed over hell and death. Do you believe that? Sin, sickness, and death are under his feet and your feet, amen. Can I say it again? Paul obviously had an amazing encounter. Paul had something dynamic happen to his life. And he's, he's somehow or other wanting to get us to know about it. The people around him, he wanted them to know about it. Let me just read this to you. And in verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? What is his exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. I want to tell you, all of hell stood to attention as the mighty manifestation of God raising Christ up, as Jesus began to stir, as he began to raise, be raised up, as he went over there, as he tore the strips off of Satan himself, as he stripped him of his authority. And now Paul is trying to say, I've experienced some of this stuff. I've experienced what God can do. I've experienced this. They've even taken aprons from my body, handkerchiefs from my, from my body, laid them on people that are demon possessed, people that are sick and they've been healed. I've felt a manifestation. I've had a manifestation from God in my life. And I want you to know that it is real. And I want you to know what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe according, not according, according to this church or that church, but according to the working of His mighty power, which He worked through Christ when He raised Him from the dead. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. That is amazing. Which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead. And seated Him in His own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And He put all things under His feet and gave Him to be head over all things to the church. This is where the promise was fulfilled. He said, my, my Lord said to my Lord, sit, come and sit with me until I make your enemies your footstool. Here is the fulfillment of it. When Christ was raised from the dead, he, this is what happened. And he said, he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him that fills all in all. And you he made alive. I believe that the devil is under our feet in Jesus' name. 